In the first message in this series, we present insights on what a biblical covenant is and highlight the importance of the blood covenant. You know, over these three services that we have this week, starting today uh, and then on Friday and on uh, Sunday, the 12th of April, I want to delve into a very, very important topic. Uh, we are calling it the blood covenant. The Bible calls it the blood covenant. And so uh, on three, these three services, we'll be focusing on the blood covenant. And honestly, you know, uh, three services uh, uh, is insufficient, really, uh, to delve into the subject and, and just to explore all the wonderful things that are in the word of God concerning this blood, the blood covenant. And it's so important because if you and I understand uh, the blood covenant and the blood covenant relationship that we have with God, uh, it makes us really strong and secure and enables us. It's the key for our relationship with God and it enables us to walk in authority and victory and confidence here on earth. So I want to, so if you're going to spend time talking about the blood covenant uh, uh, in these three uh, services, um, I'm going to try to, you know, uh, touch on some important things, but there's a whole lot more uh, that, that we're putting out in the sermon notes. And of course, in, in coming days, we'll come out as a, 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 a publication where we can actually delve into a much more depth uh, on the subject. But I will try to cover some of the key things concerning the blood covenant uh, in these three services. And then I, I just I just trust that it will be a great encouragement uh, to you. Uh, you know, uh, the Bible tells us that God is a God of covenant. So when we say God, God of covenant, uh, we're saying that God is a God who makes um, a solemn promise and then he is loyal and he's faithful to that. He's a covenant keeping God. The God of the Bible is a God of covenant. Now, just look at some verse, verses with me. Deuteronomy chapter 7 and verse 9. Uh, the Bible says, Therefore, know that the Lord your God, he is God, the faithful God, who keeps covenant and mercy for a thousand generations with those who love him and keep his commandments. So he's saying the God, uh, our God, the God of the Bible is a God who is faithful and he keeps covenant. He keeps the promises that he makes. Uh, and in Psalm 89, verse 34, God says, My covenant I will not break, nor alter the thing, the word that has gone out of my lips. So the word covenant really uh, refers to a serious binding agreement uh, between two parties. Uh, in, in, in modern modern contemporary term, we may use the word contract. You know, companies sign contracts with each other and so on and so forth. But contract uh, is, 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 you know, is a very, uh, I would say, something very, very low when it's compared to covenant. Covenant is something very solemn, very serious. Uh, covenant is a solemn promise. It's a firm, unbreakable promise, commitment or agreement made between two parties. And uh, uh, the, the Bible itself is a book of covenant. That's what we say. It's the Old Testament and New Testament. The word testament uh, 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 actually means covenant. It's used to represent covenant. Now, in our English language, the word testament is rather weak uh, because uh, in English language, we use the word testament to refer to uh, a will that, that a person would write. Uh, uh, you know uh, that expresses their desire to, uh, you know, uh, dis um, uh, to you know, uh, disperse their possessions and so on. And so we use the word testament for that. But the the word testament, as far as the Bible is concerned, always refers to a covenant. And that we will, as we go further in this, we will understand that it actually refers to a blood covenant, which is the highest type of covenant, uh, a promise uh, that that. Anyone can make. So keep in mind, the Bible itself is a book of covenant. It reveals God's covenant to us. It's the old covenant and the new covenant. Uh, the Bible therefore communicates God's covenant to us. It is God's covenant written down for us. Now, uh, covenant, really, the purpose of covenant is relationship. Why do people make uh, agreement? Why do people make a commitment, a solemn and a firm agreement? It, it is in order to establish a relationship. When companies establish a contract, it defines their working relationship. Uh, but uh, the covenant the Bible talks about is a covenant between God 
and man, and it establishes a relationship uh, between God and man. Now, we know that God is relational. God is not some force out there uh, that we cannot you know, connect with. No, God is relational. The Bible reveals God in, in many relational terms. For example, the Bible talks about God as father. And so God is a loving father and he invites us to be his sons and daughters. So that defines a relationship between God and us. He's father. We are his sons and daughters. God is king. He invites us to be uh, heirs with him, uh, heirs and joint heirs with Jesus. So he said, look, I'm king, but I'm not treating you as servants. I'm treating you as my heirs and I'm treating you as joint heirs with Jesus. That means you're here to help me establish my kingdom. You're part of my kingdom. You're inheritors of my kingdom. So that's another dynamic to our relationship with God. And covenant is so important because in covenant, covenant forms the basis for our relationship with God uh, through which he has invited us to be his sons and daughters. So our relationship with God as sons and daughters, as heirs of God, as joint heirs with Christ, all of that is wrapped in covenant. Meaning covenant is what undergirds all of this relationship. So you are a covenant son. You are a covenant daughter of God. Uh, and you're, you're an inheritor of the kingdom is wrapped in this covenant relationship with God. Now, when we look at, um, I look at scripture, you know, when we, and, and, and of course, in, in the Bible, there are many different kinds of covenants, but I just want to give us a general overview of this covenant that we're talking about, a bi biblical covenant. A covenant is usually uh, ratified. That means it comes into force uh, it is brought into force through an initiating ceremony. So marriage, is a, for instance, is an example of a, a, a good example of a covenant. Uh, marriage typically, uh, it, it comes into force by a wedding ceremony. So that ceremony ceremony uh, is, 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 is bringing into place and bringing into being a, a covenant between a man and a woman. Now, in biblical covenant, so also uh, there is uh, something that happens uh, that brings into place a covenant. And in specifically in a covenant between God and man, we say that redemption, uh, a redemptive work of God brings a covenant into place. Uh, a covenant has terms, uh, which we will refer to as obligations to that, responsibilities uh, uh, that both parties are committing, committing to. Um, there are also blessings uh, or privileges of, be, of being in the in covenant. And of course, there are consequences or curses uh, that we would say for violating the covenant, for failing to keep your part of the covenant. And most uh, and typically, these terms of the covenant, the obligations, uh, the blessings, and the consequences of the curses of the covenant were spoken out or were written out uh, at the time of the ratification of the establishing of the covenant. Now, typically covenants had a sign, a, a, a token that there, there was a covenant between two parties. In, in a marriage, uh, you know, we exchange rings or other kinds of things, which are tokens of the covenant. Uh, they are remembrances. They, are, they tell everybody else and they remind the two parties that they are in covenant with each other. Uh, a covenant has uh, usually a testator, meaning somebody who uh, is the one who uh, uh, keeps or makes that covenant, the one who brings that covenant into being. There are mediators or are people who enforce that covenant to make sure that this covenant is observed. And if anything goes wrong, uh, you know, they will step in and uh, enforce that covenant. So uh, a covenant has mediators. Now, a covenant could be made between two equal parties uh, or it could be made between a higher and a lesser party, maybe a king and a uh, 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 a smaller tribe uh, could establish covenants. And so uh, uh, in, in the Bible, there are different kinds of covenants uh, that we see. But what we are focusing in on this three-part series is really the blood covenant, the covenant that God has established with us. But I want to lay a little groundwork, a little background, so that when we start talking about the blood covenant, uh, we understand all that goes into it. Now, for the covenant that God establishes, there are two cornerstones of God's covenant. One, his word and his nature. We must understand that uh, these two are cornerstones of God's covenant. That means when God establishes a covenant with us, uh, it is backed up by his own nature and by his word. His own nature, by nature, God is a covenant keeping God. We'll talk a little bit more on that a little later. Uh, and by nature, he's a God who is 
faithful, who is loyal and who is full of mercy. And that's backing his covenant. So when you are in a covenant with God, know that the God who backs his covenant is a God who is completely faithful. He is truthful. He's a God who cannot lie. And he's a God of great mercy and compassion. The second cornerstone of God's covenant with us is his word. His word uh, is absolute truth. When God speaks, he is not like a man who would lie. Uh, you know, they would say something and then they don't really mean it. They will back off on it. But God is not a man who would lie. He says, my covenant, I will not break nor alter the word that has gone out of my lips. That means God says, when I give my word, it's settled. It's forever settled. So these are two cornerstones of the covenant that God makes with us. And in the Old Testament, you know, when, when uh, we see our verbs, uh, uh, that that express this that you know uh, uh, for instance in uh, there are places in scripture where the the covenant the word covenant is used equivalent to the word of God itself and the testimony of God his law and covenant is also used in equivalent equivalent sense to his loving kindness that means God is saying look this is an expression of my covenant two cornerstones of God's covenant his nature and his word. Now in scripture, what we see is this. Uh, when we talk about the nature of God's covenant with man, I will highlight a few things here. First of all, God is the initiator and the keeper of the covenant. When God wants to establish a covenant with man, he initiates it and he says, I'm going to establish my covenant with you. So when he came to Abraham, he said, I will make a covenant with Abraham. So God, uh, uh, when he says, I will make my covenant. I will remember my covenant. I will not break my covenant. Um, and, uh, you know, towards his people, he says, I will never forget the covenant I have established with you. And so when God, God initiates that, he establishes that. And what as people, we enter into that covenant. Uh, in Deuteronomy 29 and verse 12, he tells his people that you may enter into covenant with the Lord your God. That means God is saying, I want to establish a covenant with you. Would you like to step into this? Would you like to sign up, so to speak? Would you like to come into this thing? And so we enter in and God extends that to us. Uh, in Jeremiah 50 and verse 5, it's very interesting. It says, they shall ask the way to Zion with their faces towards it, saying, come and let us join ourselves to the Lord in a perpetual covenant that will not be forgotten. So Think about these words. It says, let us join ourselves to the Lord in a perpetual covenant. That means when you are entering into a covenant, you are joining yourself with God. It's like how a man and woman are joined together. They, they're twined. They're united together in covenant. You are joining yourself with God in an everlasting covenant, a perpetual covenant. You're coming uh, and you're becoming one. You're uniting yourself. That word there, joining ourselves, I literally made to twine, to unite, to hold it tight, to abide, to cleave. Are you cleaving yourself with God when you're entering into a covenant? You know, and that's so powerful that for you to know that you have entered into and you have joined yourself to Almighty God in a covenant through His Son Jesus Christ. You know, that should be settled in your heart. I am joined together with God in a covenant relationship. Number three. In a covenant relationship, there are blessings that are yours. Uh, and God says, you know, these are the blessings that I, I release upon you. Uh, to his people in the Old Testament, you know, God uh, God declared his blessings. He said, uh, all these blessings will come on you if you keep my word. In Leviticus 26 and Deuteronomy 28, all of this is list listed. So there are blessings. And of course, there are consequences of what we have to as curses if you fail, if you violate that covenant. So any covenant with God comes with this the blessings and the curses. And number four, you know, God does not permit dual commitments. So when you enter into a covenant with God, when you join yourself with God, that's it. You're, you're there and all of you are in, in that covenant. Then you cannot commit yourself to anything else. So God expects all of you when you step in to a covenant. Uh, and that's why in, you know, in, in scripture, he instructs us, Deuteronomy the Exodus 34, verse 14, for instance, he says, you will worship no other God, for the Lord whose name is Jealous is a jealous God. Meaning he said, look, this is it. You give yourself to me. I give all of me to you in covenant. That's it. We are for each other. And that's even what happens in marriage. 
a man or woman, they come together and they are in covenant with each other, that they are joined together. So also in our covenant relationship with God, we are, uh, there are no dual commitments uh, in, 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 uh, in a covenant with God. So now, you know, as God began to uh, 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 try to reveal this aspect of who he is to his people, uh, it was a very strategic time. We find in Exodus chapter 6, verses 3 to 5. And I want us to look at this in Exodus chapter 6, verses 3 to 5. Uh, God is speaking to Moses and he says, I appear to Abraham, to Isaac and to Jacob as God Almighty. That's El Shaddai. And we know that Hebrew term. El Shaddai, God Almighty, the all-sufficient one. But by my name, Lord, I was not known to them. I have established my covenant with them to give them the land of Canaan, the land of their pilgrimage in which they were strangers. And I've also heard the groaning of the children of Israel whom the Egyptians keep in bondage. And I have remembered my covenant. So the word Lord, uh, it's a very, very important word. Now, uh, in, uh, typically, we pronounce it as Yahweh or uh, Jehovah. Uh, it's, uh, uh, you know, it's, it's, the, it's the divine name that God revealed uh, to his people, the word Yahweh uh, or Jehovah or Yehovah. Uh, and he said, look, by this name, I was not known to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. When I revealed myself to them, God is saying, they knew me as El Shaddai. They knew me as God Almighty. But now, Moses, I want to reveal myself by this unique name, Yahweh. And it's a name that's only found in the Bible uh, for God. And this name is always used in the context of covenant. Because right here in this passage, as he reveals himself as Yahweh to Moses, he says, I want to reveal myself. He says, I have remembered my covenant. I have come here because of covenant. So uh, the Old Testament understands Yahweh always as the covenant God, the eternal, self-existent, unchangeable God who keeps covenant. And that's what Yahweh means. When we say Jehovah or Yahweh, we are saying God is the eternal, self-existent, immutable, unchangeable God who keeps covenant covenant. And uh, and so he began, he revealed himself uh, over time uh, with these covenant names, Yahweh and, and so on. So we know many of these covenant names as uh, Jehovah Elohim, Yahweh Elohim, eternal creator, Jehovah Jireh or Jehovah Nisi, the Lord, our banner of victory, Jehovah Rapha, the Lord, our healer, Jehovah Shalom, the Lord our peace, Jehovah Rohi, the Lord our shepherd, and Jehovah Shama, the Lord who's always present with us, and so on. So different covenant names. So God is saying, look, all this I am is part of my covenant with you. That means uh, this, all of this I'm making available to you through covenant, through an agreement, a solemn promise that I am making towards you. So the God of the Bible is the God of covenant. And Malachi 3 verse 6, God says, I am the Lord, that is, I am Yahweh, the same covenant name, I do not change. So even today, as New Testament believers, as we worship our God, you know, he is Yahweh. He is the covenant keeping God, the God who makes covenant and the God who keeps covenant. Now, with that background, and I know I've, you know, I've tried to be very quick on this, I want to talk a little bit about blood covenant. You see, when when uh, when people make covenant, they go through uh, a ratification and initiation process. Now, covenants can be made in so many ways. You know, sometimes people can just sign two documents. That's a covenant. Uh, sometimes they can exchange things. That's a covenant. The highest form of covenant is the blood covenant. Covenant, meaning here you are saying that I am making a solemn promise, a firm, unbreakable promise, a commitment or agreement the two parties are making with each other, but it involves blood. It means life. That means I am giving all of myself to you and I'm expecting all of you to be given to me. That is a blood covenant. And in the Bible, uh, in the Old Testament, the word for covenant is berit. And berit literally means to cut a covenant. 
That means to bring a covenant into place by cutting or by a sacrifice, by the shedding of blood. So implicit in that very word covenant in the Bible is the idea of a blood covenant. Uh, a berit itself means a, a blood covenant, to cut a covenant and to bring a covenant into place to the shedding of blood. So when you enter into a blood covenant with somebody, you're saying, I'm giving you my life, I'm giving you my love, and I'm promising you my protection. That's what's coming on the table, saying all of me is on the table, and I promise to lay it down. If you ever so need it, I am there. All of my love, my loyalty, my commitment is to you. And you're saying, if you need me to be by your side, to defend you in any situation, any matter, I am there. So really, in a blood covenant, your life, your love, your protection. You're laying it down for the other person. Uh, all of you is there. So when God established covenant, it is very interesting to see how he established a blood covenant with Abraham and then also through Moses with his people. That's what I want to highlight as we prepare ourselves to understand the new covenant, which also is a blood covenant. In making his covenant with Abraham and also with the people of Israel through Moses, both these covenants are blood covenants. And I want to just talk about it so that it will prepare us now as we come into talking about the new covenant, which is also a blood covenant. You see, after God called Abraham in Genesis chapter 12, and Abraham obeyed God, and he started walking out with God. Uh, you come to Genesis 15, uh, where the first part of that passage uh, and, and I wish we had time to read all of this, and I'd encourage you to do that. In the first part of Genesis 15, the Bible says, Abraham believed God, and God accounted it to him for righteousness. So because he believed God, God says, okay, I'm, I'm accounting righteousness to you. I'm looking at you as a man who's righteous. God could do that as a, as a foretaste of the cross. And so now he's able to make a covenant with Abraham. So you believe you are declared righteous, you are now able to enter in the covenant with Abraham. And so in that same chapter in Genesis 15, God says, Abraham, I want you to bring these animals. I want you to cut them right in between, lay them out there. And then God causes Abraham to go into a deep sleep. And the Bible says that in Genesis 15, God himself walked through the pieces of those cut animals. Blood covenant being established. God walking through. Now, typically, both parties would walk through those pieces um, as a sign that they are entering into this covenant. But here, God himself initiated it and God alone walked through it and said, Abraham, I am establishing my covenant with you. I'm giving it all here for you. And God established a blood covenant with Abraham. And uh, we, we know some of the aspects of this uh, covenant that he had. Uh, subsequently, what happened was God in Genesis 17, he changes Abraham and Sarah's name as covenant people. He gives them a new identity. Uh, then he also gives them the sign of the covenant, which was circumcision. Um, that was they had that sign in, in their bodies, uh, constantly reminding them that they were covenant people with Almighty God. And uh, Consequently, the Bible says Abraham became a friend of God. And that is the whole purpose of covenant. The purpose of covenant is a relationship. And Abraham came to this place of relationship where he was known as a friend of God. That intimate, close relationship, that's the objective of covenant. But we must understand that a covenant is established, but a relationship is developed. Right, uh, a covenant you establish it through an initiating process, uh, moment, and uh, it's initiated. But relationship is developed, and Abraham had to prove his side of that relationship. And so you and I know what happened there in Genesis uh, 22 when God told Abraham, Abraham, I want you to take your son, your only son Isaac, and go and put him, uh, take him up to the mount that I show you, and I want to see if you will offer him up uh, as a sacrifice. Now God was putting Abraham to the test. Will you keep your side of the covenant? Are you really a man of faith? Will you lay it all down? But Abraham believed God, the Bible says, and he was so confident in God. Uh, he was so established uh, in knowing that God was a covenant keeping God. Nothing affected him. He was ready to go do this because he knew that even if he were to offer Isaac as a sacrifice, God would raise Isaac back up. That was the extent of his confidence in God, that God will keep his word. God said through Isaac, 
will be my inheritance. And so Isaac, it will be, even if I were to offer him up as a sacrifice. And so he laid it all down and God saw and God honored that. And, and at that moment, God revealed a greater revelation of himself to Abraham. He revealed himself as the Lord who provides, the Lord who sees. And God uh, backed that covenant up with Abraham. And he said, Abraham, this covenant that I have with you will be with all your descendants throughout their generations. So this was a blood covenant with Abraham. The second uh, thing I want to bring our attention to is also that the covenant that God established uh, through Moses with the people. I uh, read about this in uh, uh, in uh, Exodus, the 24th chapter, verses 1 to 8, uh, after God brought his people out of Egypt and uh, uh, through the Passover, uh, they came in, uh, as they were getting ready, a journey further towards uh, their promised land. God began, God gave the law uh, to Moses. And then in Exodus 24, he tells Moses to sacrifice the animals and he takes the blood and he sprinkles it on the people. And verse 7 says, Exodus 24, verse 7, he took the book of the covenant and read it in the hearing of the people, and they said, All that the Lord has said we will do and be obedient. Verse 8, And Moses took the blood, sprinkled it on the people, and said, This is the blood of the covenant which the Lord has made with you according to all these words. In other words, he's saying, Look, I've spoken these words. These are the terms of the covenant. Now, um, we are entering into blood covenant with God, and he sprinkles the blood. So once again, the people of Israel, the Jewish people, uh, they knew that they were in a blood covenant covenant with God. Uh, this was all of God available to them and God expected all of them uh, uh, to be uh, given to uh, to him. And God instituted several sacrifices and feasts, which were all reminders of the fact that they were covenant people. You know, and it is very important for us to understand that, that uh, our covenant with God affects the way we live on earth. And so I want to highlight that So, uh, from looking at the Old Testament, looking at the, uh, the, the, the people of Israel as they walked with God. So God told him, told them in, in, in Exodus 19 and verse 5, he said, uh, if you will obey my voice and keep my covenant, you will be a special treasure to me above all people, for all the earth is mine. So God says, look, you keep my covenant. You're going to be a special people to me. You're going to be a special treasure. And so God drew a distinction between them and the rest of the nations because they were in covenant. They were in a blood, blood covenant with Almighty God. And so these people knew that they were special people, that God was with them. And uh, they were people whom God said, I will bless you. You'll be overtaken with blessings. There were blessings of deliverance, of protection, of healing, of, uh, of financial well-being, of total well-being, of victory over enemies. All of these things, God said, is yours through my covenant with you. And so they have this confidence that as long as they walked in obedience with God and uh, aligning to that covenant, all these blessings would be theirs. And God gave them instructions on how to live as a covenant people in community, uh, how they had to honor God as a community because they were a covenant people. You know, and, and this covenant really affected their everyday lives. And I also bring your attention to a few examples. Think about when David went to meet Goliath. You know, why did David have so much confidence when he went out to meet a, a, a warrior, a man who was who just excelled, who surpassed him by all means? You know, David was a shepherd, and here was Goliath, who was a warrior, a trained warrior. There's one thing that David mentioned as he ran out to meet Goliath. He said, who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he would dare challenge the armies of the living God? You know, he said, look, I am a man in covenant with God. And here's a man who does not have a covenant with God. He's an uncircumcised Philistine. And on that basis, David went out against Goliath. He knew what his covenant with God meant. And through that covenant, he was able to conquer an enemy who far uh, uh, surpassed him. And God said, you know, this covenant is, is with all your descendants. And when you come into the, the New Testament, as Jesus begins to minister, you find examples of even Jesus ministering on the basis of the covenant. And I want to just remind us of two things. You know, in Luke 13, when Jesus goes into the synagogue, he sees a woman who's been bent over for 18 years. Um, and he says, you know, I thought this woman who's a daughter of Abraham be loosed from this bond. In other words, here's a woman who has a covenant with God. She's a daughter of Abraham. She should not be in this manner, in this situation. Satan has bound her and her covenant gives her the right to be free 
from this bondage. Jesus saw that. He, he ministered on the basis of covenant with God. Um, in another time, uh, when uh, uh, the Canaanite woman came uh, uh, asking for deliverance for her daughter, Jesus said this, I cannot take the children's bread and give it away to the Gentiles. Now, the children's bread, healing and deliverance, Jesus recognized that was God's covenant provision for his covenant people. Healing and deliverance was theirs because they were in covenant with him. So what we've done on, on, the, on the service today in a very, very quick way is I've, I've just taken us through uh, an overview of covenant just to understand what this covenant is that God is a God who enters in into a solemn promise a solemn agreement a solemn commitment to his people he backs it up it's backed up by his very nature and by his word and it's a blood covenant meaning it's a covenant which is life for life and God says I lay I make all of myself available to you and I just want all of you available to me and that we have that relationship. The purpose of covenant is relationship. Our relationship with God is undergirded by covenant. And you know, when we talk about the Lord's table and we will talk about this on, on, on April 10th, uh, when we talk about the new covenant and, and the Lord's table, uh, it tells us that the celebration of the Lord's table is simply a proclamation of our blood covenant with God. On Friday, we're going to talk a little bit more uh, in depth on this blood covenant that, that Jesus Christ established for us. But today on the service, uh, as we bring this message, first part, part one of this message to a close, we're going to transition in to partaking of uh, the Lord's table together. You know, if you have your bread and water or your bread and grape juice with you, uh, that's fine. You know, uh, somebody may ask, you know, how can you use water uh, in place of grape juice? I uh, just simply because right now uh, the conditions are, are such that you may not be able to buy grape juice, go out to the store and buy grape juice. So uh, now we're just using water in its place. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, it's not a violation of the covenant because our covenant is established through Jesus Christ. These are only symbols or emblems or tokens of that covenant. And, and so as we uh, uh, partake of this together, I want us to understand what we are doing. We are saying that we are covenant people and we are in covenant with God through his son, Jesus Christ. We are in a blood covenant relationship with God. And not only are we in a blood covenant relationship with God, but we are also a, people, a community of people who are in covenant with each other. And Paul writes about this in 1 Corinthians 10. He says, you know, uh, that the, the, we all eat of the same bread and we drink of the same cup, which means that we are also connected to each other. And so as part of that covenant, we also care for each other and serve each other. We're going to prepare our hearts to partake of the Lord's table together. But before we do that, I want to just pray with any person who is probably watching or listening that if you have never received or you've never entered into this covenant, uh, as we, as I mentioned earlier, that if you have not joined yourself with God through in, in an everlasting covenant through his son, Jesus Christ, I want to give you an opportunity to do that. You see, we are all sinners, but God is so loving that he has made a way possible for us to come into a relationship with him, to enter into a covenant relationship with him, to join ourselves with him through his son, Jesus Christ. Jesus died on the cross. He paid for our sins so that God could forgive our sins on the basis of his sacrifice. And he could say, I'm counting you righteous because your sins are paid for. Come in, be a, enter into this covenant with me, be a part of my family, be a son and a daughter, uh, in the family of God. And it's possible sim by simple faith in Jesus Christ because Jesus paid the price. He was buried. He rose up again. He's alive today. And he stands as the mediator of this covenant. Now, if there's anyone listening, anyone watching, if you've never received Jesus Christ into your life, I want to lead you in a simple prayer so that you can do that. And after that, we're going to partake of the Lord's table together. So, if, you've, if you'd love to do this, if you'd love to step in to a covenant with God, if you've never done this before in your life, I want to lead you in this prayer. You pray with me. And it's so simple because Jesus did the work. All we have to do is receive a simple faith in him. 
I'll lead you in a prayer to express your faith in Jesus. And that moment, you're going to enter into the covenant. You're going to join yourself with God in an everlasting covenant. Let's pray together. Just say this with me. Lord Jesus, I am a sinner. I believe you died for my sins on the cross. That you were buried. You rose up again. You're alive today. I've heard about your covenant. I want to step into that covenant. I want to join myself with you in an everlasting covenant. Come into my life, Lord Jesus, and help me follow you and you alone the rest of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. You know, if you've prayed that prayer, we'd love to hear from you right there on the live chat. Type your comments. Uh, say something or send us an email and we'll be happy, so happy to hear from you that you prayed the prayer and entered into a covenant with God right on this service online. Now we're going to pray over the elements. Now if you've had, if you have bread and grape juice right there in your living room or you have bread and water, uh, whatever you have before you, I want to just lay your hands over it. And I'm going to pray over here. I have uh, some bread and some water in front of me. And I'm going to pray with them. And after that, I'm going to lead us together to partake. Now, as we partake of this, we are expressing our covenant with God. And I want you to receive covenant blessing. And you say, God, as part of this covenant, you've made all of who you are available to me. He said, I am Jehovah Rapha. That means I'm the Lord, your healer, as part of this covenant. I am Jehovah Jireh. I'm the Lord, your provider, as part of this covenant. I am Jehovah Shama, the Lord is present with you, as part of this covenant. And all these things, he said, I am yours through this covenant. And that's what these covenant names mean. And I, as we partake of this, I want you to pray to one of those covenant names and say, God, I need this in my life. Maybe there's healing, that's what you need. Maybe there's deliverance, that's what you need. He is Jehovah uh, Nishi, the Lord who gives us victory. Uh, maybe you need peace, wholeness. He's Jehovah Shalom, the Lord who gives total well-being. So as you partake of these elements, right where you are, you say, God, you're my covenant God. I want to receive that. And I'm praying from here that God will meet your need. He will minister to you. Let's pray and consecrate these elements. Uh, they are just tokens, uh, but we are, these tokens are symbols. They are representing this covenant that we have with God. Lay your hands on, on, on those elements that you have with you. And we're going to pray together. Father, in Jesus' name, we sanctify these earthly elements, Lord, of bread and grape juice or bread and water that we are using as tokens of the covenant, the blood covenant that we have with you through your son, Jesus Christ. We consecrate these things. And in a simple way, all around the, our homes, wherever we are, as we celebrate, as we do this, what Jesus taught us to do, Lord, we pray that by the power of your spirit, you who are Yahweh, you who are Jehovah, you who are the God of covenant, Lord, make your presence, your power, your loving kindness tangible, available of, to each one of us, God. May every person experience right now your power, your grace, your touch as we partake of these elements. The Lord Jesus, he said, take eat. This is my body that is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. This body that Jesus sacrificed was given in order to establish that blood covenant. And here today we are saying we are in a blood covenant with God. Let's partake of this bread together, knowing that we are in covenant with God. Let's partake together. The Lord Jesus said, this is my blood of the new covenant that is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. This new covenant 
has been ratified. It has been established. It has been brought into effect by the shed blood of Christ. And Jesus is not only the initiator, but he's a mediator. He's a high priest. He's the intercessor. He stands behind this covenant to make it good in our lives. As we partake of the cup together, let us receive the full blessings of our covenant with God. Let's partake of the cup together. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for every individual, every household that has just celebrated the Lord's table in a very simple way. And Lord Jesus, we worship you as one who has established this covenant. And because of that covenant, we declare your divine protection, your divine provision, and your divine healing and deliverance over each one. I want to pray for your healing right now. Would you lay your hand on that part of your body that you want Jesus to heal right where you are. Lay your hand on that part of your body that you want Jesus to heal. You are in covenant with God and Satan has no right to keep you bound. So in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, on the authority of the blood covenant, I command every sickness, every disease, every yoke of the enemy to be taken out of your life, to be destroyed, to be broken off of your body and your mind. I command arthritis to be broken off. People who've got pain in their knees because of arthritis, be released from it in the name of Jesus. Healing in the ears. Let your ears be healed in the name of Jesus. I command every infection, every disease in your body to leave. Organs that have been affected because of disease, let them be revived and made whole as disease leaves your body in the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray that every person receives their healing, whatever their condition might be, whatever problem with their pneumonia, lungs, or whatever disease they may have. Father, break the power of cancer out of people's bodies. Let that yoke be destroyed on the basis of the blood covenant. Let cancer be removed. Let terminal illnesses be removed. Let people be raised off of their sick beds. In the name of Jesus. Because of your covenant. We thank you, O oh God. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Thank you so much for joining us today on this online service. You know, I just want to make a few announcements uh, before we uh, close the service. Uh, you know, on the on the live chat, you're most welcome to type in where you're what where you are uh, watching us from, or if you've received the healing. Uh, or you have a test to me at this very moment, just type it out there in the live chat. You know, we'll be delighted to hear from you. Uh, or you could send your testimony to testimony at apcwo.org. And we'd love to hear from you and know what God has done for you. Also, I want to encourage you uh, to uh, visit our YouTube channel, the where we are watching this. Uh, make use of all the uh, 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 the services that are, uh, and the videos that are available. Share them with others so that others can benefit. If you've been blessed by this service and by the teaching, the word of God that's been brought to you, you know, I want to encourage you to share with a few people. Let them also hear it. You know, uh, this, this, the, the depth in God's word is, is so important to come into believers' lives so that they can, each believer can learn how to walk in, in what God has made available to us through his word. So you'll be blessing them when you share this uh, service with them. So go ahead, do it, share it on WhatsApp or however, that other people connect and receive uh, the teaching and the ministry that has come to you personally through this service. So they also can be encouraged and uh, make use of the resources uh, we've uh, made available. And if you need uh, uh, care, uh, if you need help, please reach out to us. We have our member care 800 number, our member care email ID. Uh, you can reach out to us. If you have prayer requests, you may email your prayer request to prayer at apcw.org and somebody will pray for you uh, and believe God for you and with you. So until next time, uh, just remember 
Jesus Christ is with you. Stay strong. Let's close with a benediction. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, our Heavenly Father, and the sweet fellowship of his Holy Spirit be with each of us always in Jesus' name. Amen. Join us on Friday, the 10th of April, as we continue talking about the blood covenant. We're going to talk about the new covenant. Very important. Don't miss it. Tell your friends. God bless.